<laughs> it just keeps getting worse. Oh my god. It there's no way it could get worse, but it just still gets worse. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with a very great cut of the most Avriel R32. Your destroy the ever living boo boo brown stain off that like and subscribe button because Konami's just taking a dump all over the floor and we're all staring at it like, where the ban list at? <laughs> so, I've been looking at the stuff on Twitter with what happened with Squiddy in Japan. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, but I've also been seeing a whole lot of players talking about quitting Yu-Gi-Oh, taking a break, issues with the game, and I actually commented on Shadow Rabbit Yu-Gi-Oh's video that she posted a couple days ago talking about how there's issues with the game, which, no duh, I think everybody and their mama realize that there are issues with the game, and just issues in general at this point where everything is at a boiling point, and people are sick of it. And for those of you who haven't been playing for years on end like your boy has, I honestly have not seen this much backlash since the March 2012 ban list. Now, you're probably wondering if you didn't play in that format or you're just not aware of the story. Avery, why specifically March 2012 of all ban lists? We well, see, back in March 2012, sit on down, get your little story time, get your binky, get your bottle, get your beer, whatever it is that you need. <laughs> uh, back in March 2012, we had uh, Tengu Plants. It was nearing the end of Tengu Plants. I think we did have Tour Guide by then. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we had just gotten Tour Guide. Um, and so... Tangu plants had just completely taken over the meta, right? Well, then come March 2012, we had just gotten wind-ups. And people were getting their hands looped for five cards with just opening, like, I think Magician Shark, whatever the combo was. But you had three copies of wind-up Zen Mighty. You had a copy of wind-up Hunter. And wind-up Hunter was not a once per turn. Neither was Zen Mighty to summon. And so wind-up hunter could loop the opponent's hand for five cards or since back in the day you opened up six you could loop them for six cards if specifically you opened up pot of avarice i remember doing that to people it was really fun and it was also really disgusting we had had that for a little bit before we got the march 2012 list and all of us even probably me i may even have a video up on the channel from over a decade ago talking about this Everybody in their mama, including me, thought, okay, wind-ups are going to get hit. There's no way in hell that they're going to keep a hand loop legal. And they didn't touch it at all. They ended up banning shit like Spore, Glow Up Bulb, like all of the plant synchro crap that was getting power creeped out of the meta. But back then, we had actual end dates for the balance, which I think this March 2012 list is what got us off of having end dates, even though the OCG has fucking end dates. And so they ended up putting out like a three-part article series actually explaining how they make a ban list and explain how they choose to hit what cards. It was a huge thing. So the whole point I'm making with that story is that we are seeing the community again at a boiling point, but even worse now because the community has only grown in the past 12 years since that happened. And it's it's actually insane to me seeing how many people are talking about quitting the game. I, I found a YouTuber just in my recommended feed. Uh, it was actually last night. He only had a couple hundred subscribers, and he mostly just did like Yu-Gi-Oh product opening. And he was talking about how he's going to Magic now, and he may open Yu-Gi-Oh from time to time, but he's going to start opening up Pokemon. And he's like, I went to a Magic tournament just to have fun, and like everyone was so welcoming. I don't get that from the Yu-Gi-Oh community, and. The issue that I have with people talking about the Yu-Gi-Oh community being toxic. Is it toxic? Yes. Don't get me wrong. But I feel that that has gotten better over the years only because of the fact of how long I've played. I mean, I talked about in my love-hate relationship video with Yu-Gi-Oh how there was a kid at our locals who got called a homophobic slur, went home crying, and never came back to the card shop. Like, that was a thing that actually happened, right? Right. That does not happen anymore, at least in my local community here in Jacksonville, Florida. You know, are you going to have people in any community that are dicks? Yes, because for whatever reason, and I actually talked about this uh, with my homie Valley D that we're always talking about on the channel when we were in Indianapolis for the YCS, and he was talking about how it seems like some people get like a at self entitlement because they're like, oh, I spent a thousand dollars on Snake Eyes. I'm gonna pop my collar, and uh, I deserve to win because I spent this money, and you just suck at the game. Like, 
they they think that they have the biggest ultra ball in the room because they spent a thousand dollars on cardboard when really they're just a giant donkey for doing that because their investment's going to go down in value but you have these players who think that they're the gift to, on god's green earth to this game because of that right and so it creates this toxic community where like People will judge you for what deck you play. People will get pissed because, I don't know, you top deck the shifter on them or just whatever the case may be, right? I personally, I don't have any issue with anybody in my community, right? Like, I get along with everybody. They get along with me. Maybe they talk crap about me behind my back. If they do, okay, I don't care. Like, if they have an issue with me, all of us are adults. Like, literally, I think the youngest person that, that I know of in the community is, like, 14. And, like, everybody else is, like... 18 and higher like mostly 20s like the average age is probably like 22 23 to be honest so like my community is pretty healthy at least from what i've experienced but not every community is like that so you have that going against Yu Gi Oh. you have the tier zero format going against Yu Gi Oh. which the tier zero format like if you if you like were to play competitively go to a regional ycs whatever when you look at the snake eyes end board and i talked about this in my video talking about how this format's actually pretty easy which it is it's just a boring format because it's all snake eyes all the time but if you know where to hand trap if you open up enough hand traps you just hand trap every play that the snake eyes player does as long as it's not named wanted because if you're hand trapping the wanted you're just doing it wrong and so like it's not hard to stop snake eyes but it's the fact that people are so tired of all of the baby back bullshit that is in this game compared to even something like one piece that i saw cali effect talking about we're like you just exist you're a body at the venue and you get all of this crap for entering the event i'm like i don't even play one piece and i'm gonna go to a tournament just to enter with you know a bs deck list get my prizing and drop and leave and just keep the sealed product and go sell it on ebay to make money like that sounds like a really nice idea and like what do you get for winning, like, let's say if you won YCS Indianapolis, congratulations, you got a trophy and a vanilla monster prize card that some people are happy with. Me, I'm not because I like to see cool cards. A vanilla prize card is liquid ass. Like, you can't use it in any decks. I get I get both sides of the picture with that, though, right? But you get sleeves, packs, a rubber mat, woo and you get a trophy, Do I look like I give a shit yet? <laughs> like, Yu-Gi-Oh! is the one game in the room where you play it to build a resume to look impressive to other grown-ass men or the one girl in the room. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Do you see where this is going now? And I say all this because then it tops off with Squiddy going to Japan and all of the places that he went to go play Yu-Gi-Oh! are like, no, you're not allowed to play because you don't speak Japanese. Or he went to a sushi bar. You're not allowed to play because... Or you're not allowed to eat here because you don't speak Japanese. That is more of a cultural thing. I understand that. But it's still just like, what the hell, right? It, it, it doesn't help the uh, boiling, hot-tempered issue that the community has right now. You know, back in the day, it was Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic. And then eventually Pokemon came in. Now we've got One Piece. Now we got Digimon. Now we got Card Fight. Even though, like Cali Effect said, no one really plays Card Fight unless your name's Emicole Forty. I don't think anyone in the Jacksonville Yu Gi Oh or anyone in the Jacksonville like card game community that I know of at least plays Card Fight Vanguard. I mean, I call it Card Fart Vanguard for a reason because like I just don't care. Like it's whatever. Uh, all of this to say, right? That this is the type of thing that causes card games to die, right? Konami, you're not interacting with the community. You're not answering our questions. And to top that off, and I, I actually want to save this for another video, but I, I'm going to tell it here, and then I'm still going to tell the whole thing in another video, possibly. But I actually sent an email to Konami. Like, I, I found their business contact. I shot them an email. And basically, the email said, look, I'm a YouTuber. My name's Avery Lar 32 blah, blah, blah. There's questions that I have about the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I've played competitively for 16 years. You know, how is a ban list created? Uh, how is it that... What What is decided on what rarity that cards will be in products? You know, how do you decide what a secret rare is? Whatever. And, and there were some other things I had asked. I don't remember off the top of my head. But I was just like, I understand if you can't, you know, do a video interview for YouTube to answer these things. You know, an, an email response would be great. I got nothing. 
Now, did I really expect to get anything back? No. But the fact remains that they are blatantly ignoring when other companies are actually talking. They're answering. Perfect dichotomy to this, right? Look at X Defiant, made by X Cod Devs, where they're constantly interacting with the community. They're constantly talking. They're constantly giving updates. Meanwhile, it took Activision almost 10 years to say, hey, skill-based matchmaking exists. And then X Defiant's like, hey, we're not going to have any skill-based matchmaking. We all knew skill-based matchmaking existed in COD. Just Activision didn't want to say anything about it. And it's sort of a similar thing with Konami. Like, I understand you don't want to do cash prizes. I honestly don't want cash prizes in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because if people think Yu-Gi-Oh! players are toxic now, can you imagine if there's $10,000 on the line? If you win a tournament, you damn well better believe people are going to be rule sharking you out the wazoo if there's money on the line. So I actually don't want money involved in this game i think that's way too much stress but to give better pricing like even just for entering you're paying what used to be 20 dollars. i remember now you're paying what 23 to 25 dollars to enter a regional or a ycs and you get five packs and the packs might be from a liquid ass set bro no absolutely not Ain't nobody want to deal with that. Something that actually uh, one of the players I was talking to at the YCS or that Valley D was talking to was like, I stopped going to regionals. I go to the first regional of the season, ideally get my invite at that first one, and then just start going to YCSs. Because what little you have to gain value-wise, whether it's entering a tournament, winning a YCS, whatever, you get more value pretty much overall by going to a YCS. Even the side events, the side events offer better prizing than the main event an uncut sheet uh, uh, yo i can put that with my uncut sheet pillowcase like sure like let's let's do it like i could sell that make a lot of money like i cannot tell you how many people i saw at the ycs in indianapolis after round two just drop and go to the side events there were more people on the side event side of the venue than there was in the main event <laughs> oh my god i'm really worried about this game I really am because it's not going to last much longer if they keep this up. And a ban list isn't really going to fix all this. Konami needs to give us better prizing. They need to answer the community's questions. They need to take this feedback instead of just being like, we're not going to say nothing. Deal with it. It's how card games get taken back behind the barn. Guys, let me know what you think about all this. Uh, I love this game. I want to see it do well, but it's getting flushed down the toilet. Thanks for watching, you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. I am really liking this hairdo.